are live. Welcome, mystery and thriller fans. I'm your on-air host, Sarah DeVello, and I am thrilled to be launching my mystery and Thriller Maven series today in collaboration with my favorite bookstore, Murder by the Book, kicking off with number one New York Times bestselling author, Maureen Johnson, who's here to tell us all about her red hot new book, The Box in the Woods. Maureen, welcome to Mystery and Thriller Mavens. Tell us thank about your book. Sure, thank you for having, hold on, let me just grab one from the pile back here. That yeah. way I have, also have one in my hands. I'll just put it there. Yeah. Okay, there, little book. So this is a standalone young adult mystery, although adults can and frequently do read YA and uh, are welcome to. This The detective in the story is named Stevie Bell, who I introduced in a series called the Truly Devious series. You don't need to have read it to read this. This is a separate case. And it takes place in the summer. And Stevie, who has established herself in the Truly Devious case, gets a note from a man who has recently purchased a camp, a summer mm. camp called Camp Sunny Pines that used to be called Camp Wonder Falls. And this camp and the town of Barlow's Corners, Massachusetts was the, was the scene of an infamous 1978 quadruple homicide in which four camp counselors were killed. And some of them were found in the box in the woods. And it's never been solved. And he wants to make a true crime show about it and thinks that having Stevie involved would be kind of a good gimmick, good publicity, and invites her to come to the camp and help investigate it and make a show about it and maybe solve the case. And so Stevie travels with some of her friends to Barlow Corners, Massachusetts, and they become camp counselors and try to figure out what happened in 1978. But uh, in doing so, things, um, some bad things happen. Dun, dun, dun. dun. I love it. <laughs> well, I can't wait to get into every single dirty detail. But first, I just want to welcome everyone who's watching on Facebook, everyone who's watching on YouTube, everyone who's watching everywhere. Hi, everybody. If you've been here before, you know how it works. And if you're new, welcome. We're thrilled to have you. Here's how it works. Every Tuesday, I'm gonna give you two featured authors and you get to ask them anything. This is a collaborative conversation. This is your time to ask this extraordinary number one New York Times bestselling author anything you want about her writing process, about her books, about her knowledge of the classic murder mystery, about true crime, about anything that's hanging out in your brain. Get it going in the comments. That's what we're here for. And I see they're already starting. This is fantastic. Gail saying happy inaugural, Sarah. Gail community member they're great to have you welcome back leslie from canada is saying hello i should try to do a can canadian accent better hello. Hello. Uh, welcome hello. everybody hello hello Ooh. gail is saying how perfect for your first interview it's pouring rain here in massachusetts yes boston girl here i spent some time in the berkshires because i teach at Kripalu yoga center um, so that is familiar stomping grounds to me. I was so excited when I got to that part of the book and I was like, yes, my stomping grounds. Christina Powers, books to grammar extraordinaire saying, hi, Sarah. Hey, Christina. Good to have you back, girl. Carol saying, looking forward to reading this book. I've read all of the others and love them. Carol, clearly you're in the right place. Tell us what you love about them in the comments. Let's get it going. Um, so I am one of those adults who has not read a Harry Potter, has not read an, a YA since Harry Potter. And you guys, I'm loving this book. I can totally re relate, even though I'm technically old enough to be <laughs> Stevie's mom. Um, it is so funny. And I, I'm a true crime junkie. Who else is a true crime junkie? Hands up in, yes, Maureen. Um, and so I love the true crime angle. I love to watch Stevie unraveling this. And I love that we're flashing back in time to 1978 and actually unraveling this mystery, then flashing forward 30 uh, years, to uh, 40 years to, uh, math's clearly not my strong suit, to, to see how they're doing it now. So Maureen, how was that to write those two, those two um, very different timeframes? So all of the cases Stevie works on are cold cases that take place in other other time periods. The Truly Devious case took place in the 30s. So this one's much more recent. I love writing those sections. Yeah. They're, they're probably my favorite parts to write. Mm. Why um, are they your favorites? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I think it's, I, yeah, it, it just very, very much appeals to me, writing those sections. Uh, possibly because those are actually the places where I'm laying down all the clues and the 
I'm really giving you the, I'm setting up the scene. I'm mm. putting the pieces down on the, like I'm setting up a playing field. But I also do like to work in historical periods. Mm. Now, it's, 1978 doesn't, it both isn't, it's, it's not like we're writing in the 1700s. This is, this <laughs> is a, a time period that is very accessible, yes. uh, but it's far enough. Yeah. But it's definitely close enough that there are a lot of people who were present at the time who are present now. Yes, I'm one of them. I was present in 1978 and I am present now. And it doesn't see, it seems both very long ago and very recent. But I love how you capture sort of, and I think you described it as free and loose a couple different times. I love that. And then music and the and the songs on the on the cassette player that they're listening to by the campfire. It's so, it's so fun to go back to those 70s of vibes. Um, Leslie's saying nothing like a creepy camp experience and loved the part about the nutshell studies. Um, so why, why a creepy camp experience and how was that for you to write Maureen? Well, it, when I, the truly DVD series takes place at a school, it takes place at Ellingham Academy and the story kind of ends at the end of the school year. So I had the summer air, so I was thinking, okay, she's going to get involved in a case over the summer. And you also, when you write young characters, like teenage characters, in order to get them somewhere, you need to have them in a place that makes sense, which is why we have so many stories about schools, because it is oh. the logical place to gather younger characters. It's it, in a boarding school means they can live there, um, but a camp makes sense. And camps are surrounded by usually things like woods, which are a great setting to do dark and dirty deeds in. Dark and, and dirty, yes. dark and dirty deeds and then <laughs> the, the 70s the 70s has the unfortunate reputation for being a golden age of serial killing it kind of as it is an age in which bad things happen in the woods or that's the, the kind of it has the urban legend feel of bad things happening out in the woods so all of those things kind of came together as the most kind of logical and best setting for this particular story. I love that. Now, why do you think that there were so many serial killers? I mean, obviously, uh, also very famously, the Golden State Killer, which real life um, uh, true crime junkie, um, Michelle McNamara solved, and you actually dedicate your book to the guy who brought that documentary to life. Why do you think there were so many? Was it because we didn't have DNA evidence as much? Either way, we didn't have cameras everywhere. I mean, why, why, why was it their heyday? Well, cameras and cell phones and everything hadn't been around for until recently. Hmm. But I, my guess would be that there is a certain amount of um, freedom, which is good, and people kind of, kind of going off on their own and living on their own and hitchhiking around and living on communes or camps. And so there were a lot of people willing to get on the back of a motorcycle or in a car. Um, yes. If people were in some way, uh, maybe inebriated or if it's not like, this isn't, this is not blaming a victim or anything like this is certain altered states of mind might enable certain things to happen. Um, but it's, a, I think, a combination of freedom, of looseness, of, it's the dark side of freedom or, you know, because a lot of good things came out of those periods. That This is just something else that came out of it. Also, there's a bunch of who knows. I mean, it's some of the the incredibly weird things that happen because mm. um, it's full of just genuinely, genuinely gnarly, um, strange, is it that we didn't know mm. in some cases that other, it's not like serial killers are new. They're not, um, that maybe people were able to link crimes a little bit more clearly. Mm. Right. But you, have to, you have to get a lot of communication between departments or investigators in terms of our media in order to say that oh there's actually like a pattern here there's actually somebody that's doing all of these things yes yes and i watched um unbelievable on netflix and the reason that guy went uncaught for so long is because the different 
um, police and were not communicating as much as they as they are now. And so we see that over and over. That it's such a good point. Christina's adding is also was a big area era for COVID. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Were big in the seventies. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now, Maureen, in the book, there, um, and I'm only halfway through, so don't, no spoilers, but there's, you know, there's the three sort of uh, uh, kids who are in a little more trouble, not not the excelling students. And then there's one classic good girl, Sabrina. Wh wh which do you identify more with? Which were you in high school? Oh, I was for sure. I was pretty squeaky. So you um, were Sabrina. You were the, you're the good. I I don't, I mean, so, I don't think, I, honestly, I don't think I'm any of them. I, I, I might be Eric. I don't know. Like it's, it's, mm. yeah, he, he's a little looser. Mm. He's a, he's a good kid. He's, you know, they're, they're all except for one. They're, they're all, there's, they're, well, I guess it depends on how you look at it. They, they're, there's a lot of stories going on. A lot There's of a lot going on between beneath the surface about what has actually happened in Barlow Corners. Yes, indeed, indeed, in Barlow Corners. Now, how is that to write for you? Was it? I mean, do you have a? Is it like a beautiful mind in there in your office? Are you just covered with you know all the layers because it's so intricately plotted? I mean, how did you? How did you hold that in your brain? How'd you plot it out? If you plot, I can't imagine that you pants this. I mean, do you? Oh no, this is it, all the mysteries are meticulously, meticulously. I don't even start them until I have all the crime and details and everything completely worked out then, so, I, then yeah. I begin okay walk us through that you write it out on giant sheets of post-it paper are you doing it on your computer what walk us through your process Start it's a little it. it's a little bit of everything there isn't mm. really one it's just that in order to develop the crime it, it's kind of a i collect up a bunch of thoughts like what kind of thing i'm looking for um i really start with why before I do how or who. So I think a lot about the why, I think a lot about what kind of place or thing I'm trying to make. And then I, I just kind of let it, and there's a lot of post-its. Um, if I have an idea, I, I pin it, like I write it on a post-it, I pin it to the board and I kind of collect it, synthesize it, pull it back out again and go, okay, rearrange some stuff, synthesize it, pull it back apart again, rearrange it. It's, it's like I'm sort of engineer, it, it is very, technical mm. I, I really engineer these bits together then then i can start to color once i have the framework i'm like okay now i'm starting to see the shape of this thing perfect and how long does it take you to engineer that before you start to color it in a couple months mm -hmm. and how long do you start to finish about a year for each wow. one they each generally they're coming out about once a year so yeah but it takes about a year um, Truly Devious took a little bit longer in the planning stages because it was a three, it was told over three books. And so it's it's a fairly giant amount of information that then I had to plot out and divide into sections. So Ooh. it was a bit, it was a lot, of, but it's very, very carefully planned. Yeah, yeah, and you can tell that because it's it is there's so many meticulous details and they're woven together in such a it's such a clever clever and intricate way. Now, as you were writing this, were you listening to some groovy '70s tunes? I put it out to the audience what their favorite tunes are from the '70s. Anne is sharing Moody Blues, uh, "Nights in White Satin." Christina saying, "Dream on" by Aerosmith. Do you write to music? Do you write to silence? How do you get in the mood for the '70s groove? Uh, <laughs> I usually don't have anything playing because I have a kind of one, if I'm concentrating, I have to concentrate and I may listen to something before, but usually even if I have it on in the beginning, I usually have to turn it off because I can't, I have to, I have a one track mind. I have to kind of keep my head on what I'm doing. Very cool. And how do you get in the mind? And I'm just wondering, cause I myself don't have kids. How do you get in the mind of an 18 year old? Uh, I think very, I like that it just says Maureen writes in silence. <laughs> I wrote that. <laughs> and Maureen so, writes in a tomb of utter silence. I'll tell you though, some of the best places to write are the super quiet blank. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I need a beautiful, I'm like, no, like a, like a complete blank library carol in a, like, a blank wall is sometimes your best friend. Yes, Jeffrey Deaver, when he came on the show, he plots it out for six months, 180 pages usually. Then he goes into his bedroom, which he has blacked out with blackout 
curtains and shades. And he actually writes in silence by tactile typing. Oh, so he can't even see what he's typing? No, that's how he writes completely in silence and blind. That's, Crazy. that's, that's a step further than me. <laughs> I also need silence. I'm easily distracted. <laughs> that, that's the thing is that I, I used to sometimes be able to, I just saw hollow notes come up. I just like that. I just occasionally seeing things like hollow notes. Um, <laughs> that, that's Gail, a Gail sharing. That's her favorite seventies tune. Man eater for the win. I love to jam to that song. <laughs> There's a lot of Fleetwood Mac. There's yeah. a lot of Fleetwood Mac and a lot of Wilson. Yes, yes, and at the pivotal scene, murder and scene. That's actually how Sabrina realizes that Eddie, that that um, uh, the oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Eric, 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 as has been gone for too long because four songs have gone by, and that's ten minutes because she knows the tape so well. Um, and so I loved that. I loved that detail. It's a very dramatic song too. It really is. It really is. Anyone else remember when that Fleetwood Mac song just went viral during the pandemic with that dude skateboarding along, chugging cran, cran raz? Playing dreams. Yeah. Just dreams. Oh, my gosh. Maureen, what's your favorite scene in the book? Let us know so that when we get to it, we know that's your fave. I can't because it is. it, it, it would be a spoiler. So I can't okay. do it. About how far into it is it? Um... Give us a hint so it's we know quite, when we get it's to quite, it. It's quite near the end. Okay. Okay. All right. That's we'll that's the reason I can't because it's it because it would if I would actually just be saying what it was. Ooh. Okay. Um, so one thing I'm one of the many things that I'm loving about this book is you are very funny, um, which Kirkus also said. So we know it's true because the praise yeah. from Kirkus don't come cheap. So um, Maureen, how 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 do you be funny on the page? Do you think you're funny? Do people tell you you're funny? <laughs> What's the secret of the humor? Fill us in. I'm hilarious. You are hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, do you crack yourself up when you're writing? No. Okay. okay. I just sound like me. <laughs> I just sound like me. So if people think that's funny, then but I just sound like me. You're. I think you're very funny. So I just popped it up. I'm just going to pop it up briefly so it doesn't take up our whole faces. But um, Kirkus raved. That I did like that we were sort of peering over it. Yeah. I, you know what? I'll pop it back up. Johnson's <laughs> think tall, Maureen. Sit tall. Johnson's hallmark charming humor and lovable char characters provide a robust foundation for another cracking mystery, this time ingeniously working with summer camp and locked room mystery tropes. Um, now, you are yourself an expert in uh, classic mystery tropes. Where Are you a lifelong reader? Are you a studier? Give us the scoop on that. I have been, yes, since I was a little kid. Yeah. I've been reading all the mysteries I could get. I mean, truly, this was day in, day out, constantly, every single one in the library. Everyone I could get my hands on, I was obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. From the age of about four, that was when I first got my first little child's version of Sherlock Holmes. Oh, I and love it. They were little, little versions of them, and I was absolutely transfixed, and it's never stopped. So that's just, you know, it's like anything that that's what you do. Like that's, you know, like if you love a sport or if you played it, you just, you just have always done it, and it's just in your head. You, you know all the moves, they, they're, they've been in your head forever. It's really, it's kind of really that, that's, that. Weird. My video just went off, which is very strange because I'm on an Ethernet hard wired cable. I'm not even on Wi Fi. <laughs> very strange over here. Um, okay. So, Maureen, what was your favorite mystery book when you were a kid? Probably a Western game, which I talk about constantly because it is a perfect book. Um, I really, and I read, I still reread it probably once a year. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's the one you go. Is that the only one you reread or do you go back to others as oh, well? I, I reread all kinds. Yeah, I reread things constantly. I'm a, I'm more of a rereader sometimes than I'm a reader. I just kind of, but the Westing game is, I was so obsessed with it and it, it feels almost internal. Like when you love something so much, you're like, well, that's just, wasn't always part of me. Like didn't, <laughs> didn't it always exist in, inside of me that that's how it, the Westing game was and Turtle were. It's a it's a perfect mystery, but yeah. there are so many. I don't know, but yeah, I can, I'm going to probably say the Westing game, which is usually what I say. 
Yes. Okay, cool. This is very interesting. Gail is saying the rain gods must be added again. That's why I'm my Great picture went out twice on an e on an ethernet. I'm plugged into the wall, so I am not supposed to be going out. <laughs> Clearly, Mercury is in re retrograde and the rain gods are added again. I think you solved it, Gail. Um, everybody, I want to let you know that you can grab a copy of Maureen's brand new book, The Box in the Woods, from our favorite bookstore, Murder by the Book today. And guess what? You can also get her backlist. So you can get the Devious Trilogy. You can get all, copies of all Maureen's books. So I'm gonna put them right there in the comments. So you can uh, grab anything you like. This brings up her whole backlist. I just put it in the comments. So, exactly, I feel like I'm a magician. I like roll out the cards. <laughs> uh, um, oh my gosh, Amy B. Sharon my fellow author best friend hey amy she's saying she's thank ordering you. them all now amy yes thank you but murder by the book is such a good it's such a good bookstore i mean if you, love, if, if you love murder mysteries and i do like you just go in you're like oh they're all here Amy is clar clarifying. She is literally ordering oh. them now. Amy, this is why I love you. This is why one of the many, many, many reasons why I adore you. Um, thank you. This is amazing. And also to celebrate today, I'm buying one lucky winner, the book of their choice and also the cool mystery themed mug of their choice. So let us know in the comments what is the next book that you can't wait to read and on friday i'm gonna pick one lucky winner i'm gonna buy you that book and a coffee mug so that you can keep yourself hydrated and caffeinated yeah. and awake to keep reading so get it going in the comments what book are you most excited about of course authors helping authors women helping women this is what we do y'all this is what we do all right the praise for this book you guys is freaking amazing so um, Cosmo has named it a best book of the year. People Magazine named it a best book of the year. Booklist awarded it a starred review. I'm popping that in the comments too because you want to read just how great this is. It's really cool to see all these accolades just pouring in. Um, and what do you think, Maureen, is the key, the single most important key to writing a book that earns this kind of page, the praise, that keeps those pages flying, that keeps me up till 3 a.m. begging for just one more chapter. How do you do it? I don't know. If I if I knew, I would. I just, uh, I don't know. I mean, what? You just, you, I almost, my, the question almost made me roll back in my chair. <laughs> um, I just write. You just write. Okay. I mean, the thing is, you can't, you never know what reception you anything you do is going to get yes you so, put it on faith you write your book mm. you write your book what do you think is the key to building good suspense let me put it that way uh a number of things mm, um the things where you cut action at the end of chapters where you um maybe i don't Oh, I'm glad somebody just ordered the Westing game. It's so good. Yeah. Carol saying she just ordered the Westing game. I never heard of that. So I'm loving this recommendation. Yes, it's it's a so it was published in 1978. It's by Ellen Raskin and it won the I guess the Newbery in 1978. Wow. And it, it's sort of a lone star of um, children's lit, but it's it's a puzzle mystery that takes place in a building called Sunset Towers where all of these people come and live and then I don't know. Just and get it. Just you know what, it. you guys? It is on sale for seven ninety nine today. I just put the comment in. I just put the link in the comments. Order it for Murder by the Book. We got to shop local, you guys. We got to support independent bookstores because you know what? Tragically, one per week has gone out of business since this freaking pandemic started. And if we want to have bookshops to browse and aisles to browse and, and books to open and smell, does anyone else like to smell books? I do. And you want to have that experience. We got to shop local. We got to support indies. And this is one of the oldest and most respected bookstores in the country. So buy it from Murder by the book i just put the link in the comments they'll Maureen, know that book they'll know that book at murder by the book they'll know that book all right back to building suspense what are the keys fill me in uh, a lot of planning mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's just a lot of like building that structure and it's it's sort of like jenga or something it's a lot of i i i guess i don't know i just do i just do the work 
But you said where you cut action at the end of the chapter matters. Yeah, I mean, you have to, You, I think you kind of cut the tape a couple seconds, like you run the whole scene out and you kind of cut it back a little bit just to leave it, leave it a little hot, like what is actually going on. Mm. I think you're, you're just constantly, you're constantly trying to make people care about what is going on while they don't know what is going on. Well, I love that. And whatever you're doing, it's working because I do, as a reader, care about what's going on. So it's clearly, and I'm not the only one, so clearly it's working. Um, Carol again saying she just ordered the, the Westing game. Thank you so much for that. Debbie is saying she's listening from Arizona. That's the one good thing about this pandemic. We got people listening for, from everywhere. And I love that we're a global community united in our love of mystery and thrillers. She's watching from Arizona. She supports MB. Uh, murder by the book by mostly the indie store poisoned by the pen another great one poisoned yeah. by the pen also a good one christina saying any asking any favorite reads or future releases that you're excited about maureen great question christina maureen fill us in uh there you know there's so many whenever people ask like what's a great book i'm like i don't know because like every it's like you're constantly it's like how every time i meet a dog it's like i've never met a dog before I'm like oh this is God. so exciting um <laughs> There's a new uh, YA Mr. Out called Ace of Spades, which is fantastic. Um, uh, uh, I, my friend Holly has a new adult series that's about to come out, Holly Black. Uh, so if you have, obviously, if you haven't read um, um, her any of Holly's books, uh, you should 100% be doing that. Um, oh God, it's how. Did, it's like you're at a buffet and it's like so much it's the Ooh. endless shrimp it's endless shrimp. <laughs> endless shrimp i am here for it i'm also popping into the comments all of holly black's books that's a new author to me so i'm excited to check those out um very cool thank you thank you for that i'm just making sure i didn't miss any comments anna is saying she just read the ya book we are inevitable it's it was delightful anna that's so great to know thanks for sharing dana is sharing that she supports her local indie one more page books in virginia she says she loved maureen's stories that starts with the name of the star will there be any more in that series yes and i know i keep saying that uh there was a technical reason why that got held up but the answer is yes do I know when yet? I don't, but I constantly am working on the prop. Very cool. Christina saying that Ace of Spades is also fantastic. Christina, thank you for that recommendation. And you guys, I love hearing how you're supporting all your local bookstores. Yeah. This is so awesome. We're going to do it, you guys. We're going to save indie bookstores. Yay. Anna is saying that from this chat, she would like to read The Box in the Woods. It sounds exactly like her 70s cup of tea. Anna, you're making my day. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Um, okay, you guys, we have two minutes left, which means we're in the lightning round. Get your questions going for Maureen. We've got some time. She's got the answers. We've got it. Let's do it. Yes. Um, side note, Maureen, I'm loving this orange flowy thing you're wearing. Very 70s, very fabulous. Tell us about that. <laughs> Is this your oh. fave? No, but I mean, I'll, I'll own it. Like, it does feel like these are Stevie Nicks sleeves. She likes a kimono sleeve. Right? She likes exactly. a kimono sleeve, so. And orange is my favorite color. Uh, so this is, it, it's working for me. Oh, I usually don't wear orange, but like this one is, it's just very, you can do this a lot. Yay. Okay. Carol would like to know, did you go to a private school? I'm betting, uh, yeah, from your knowledge of Ellingham up there in Vermont. What's your, would you imagine it? Did you, were you there? Tell us. Oh, that's a completely imagined school. I went I to, a, I went to a Catholic school, which is very, it was, which, which was private, but real different. Uh, I went to an all girls Catholic school in Philadelphia. Ooh, which one? Uh, Nazareth Academy. So I'm also a Philly girl, which Maureen and I just figured out. And my mother and all of her sisters also went to to Catholic all girls schools. And of course, my father went to private all boys, Catholic all boys schools, all Philly. So I was like, maybe that would be the same one. That would have been so cool. Which one? Um, which one was your mother? She was at St. Luke's. Okay, I got you. 
Debbie saying orange is her favorite color too. Debbie, you're right. It's just these beautiful sunset colors. I love red. I love orange. I love purple. I love vibrant, beautiful sunset colors. Um, so that's a great question. And I loved how Ellingham was like, we'll let you in if you if you have a passion project we want to develop you. I was like, oh, that place sounds cool. I would like to go to someplace like that. It's real dreamy. It's very dreamy. Yes, exactly. Kind of sounds like the high school equivalent of Hampshire College. Like, just come on in. Yeah. We're going to like let you free form out there in Western Massachusetts, you know? Yeah. I love that. Maureen, what's one thing that, oh, wait, another question before I get to my question. Anne is saying that every time she watches a book talk, she adds more sh more books to her shelf. She loves Murder by the Book. They helped her stay sane during 2020. Anne, it's you're great. awesome. Yay, I love hearing that. Anissa joining us from South Carolina. Welcome, top community member there. Thanks for coming over with me. Good to see you over here. Um, it's been, so, you know, I love, I love my mystery and thriller people. They're the best. So it's so good to see you. It's so great to meet some new people. This is awesome. Um, Maureen, what's one thing that you would like to um, have people feel, learn, experience, walk away from when they leave the world of Stevie and, and the box in the woods? I love really classic detective mysteries really yes. classic. so this is a very these are very much on the model they are classic mystery models they are puzzles they are puzzle mysteries so the clues are all there there's all it's all it's all there mm. it's there it, you can solve this it, so it's i like the i like mysteries that invite readers to play the game and are play the game fairly and it's there so you can you can solve it Yes. So that is some, that's a t particular topic that is of special interest to me. So I'm wondering how, uh, from a craft perspective, how you roll that ball down the middle. So you don't want people on page two going, it's the butler, but you don't want people to get to page 300 and say, there was a butler. Like, how do you, how do you, is it, do you get that feedback from beta readers or how do you know that you're giving all the, you're playing the game? And I liked how you said fairly, not giving it away too soon, but not making it too easy either. I have no beta readers. Okay, so um, how do you I do it. Out? I do it. I do it in um because uh, I do it very slowly. You know, mm. there's a, a lot of there's a lot. It's a lot of planning. It mm. really it really is a lot of planning. I can't so imagine. a lot of planning and testing. It's it's sort of it's like an engineering project. It's a lot of planning and testing. A lot of planning and testing. I love it. Anissa is saying she's late because she was at summer school. Yay. Thanks for, thanks. Thank you, educators. Thank you for that. That's wonderful. Um, Gail saying it sounds intriguing. Gail, I agree. I agree. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us here today on our inaugural kickoff of Mystery and Thriller Ravens, which is the incarnation 2.0 of my Mighty Mystery series in collaboration with Murder by the Book. Tell me what book you're most excited to read next in the comments, and I'm going to pick one lucky winner on Friday and buy you a book and the mug of your choice. So if you're not watching live, that's okay. People have lives, people have work, we get it. So you have till Friday, uh, get it going. Maureen Johnson, number one New York Times bestseller. Thank you for coming on the show today to tell us about the box in the woods. To spill the tea as the cool kids say, give us the scoop, give us the skinny, share all that you have uh, done to put into this book. It's been such a joy talking to you. This has been awesome. And uh, coming up at four, I. I have Laura Lippman. Wow, so we'll great. see y'all then. Uh, Gail saying congrats. One down and hundreds to go. Yes, another hundred. <laughs> Gail, let's do this. Buckle in. It's gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good ride. Carol, Carol saying thanks so much and keep writing, Maureen. We know she will. <laughs> We're gonna let her go so she can get back to her her tomb of silence where she's gonna be pounding out the next in the series. There she is. You can just so, see so the silence. You can see the wheels turning, the brilliance emanating. <laughs> Dana is saying, this has been an awesome interview and she wants to read this book. Yes, Dana, do yes. It. Do We're it. Do <laughs> that is awesome. Gail is saying, thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Christina is saying, thank you. Anissa is saying, thank you. You guys are the best. This has thank been awesome. All. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time right here on Mystery and Thriller Mavens. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>